Hello and welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. In this video, we'll learn how to dynamically call and run a VI in LabVIEW. First of all, consider I want to write an application in which I should be able to generate different types of signals. For example, the sine wave, square wave, and triangular wave. So first of all, I'll create an enum with three different values. So once I've created it, I'll use a case structure to write a code to enclose the simulate signal VI. So I'll go to the express VI and then get the simulate signal generator. I'll select the sine wave for the first one. I'll remove the empty cases and I'll create the graph indicator. Uh, if you see, if I run it, as you can see, I can generate the sine wave. Similarly, I'll duplicate these cases and change that as a square wave generator. Similarly, I'll duplicate this case again. And finally, I'll generate the triangular wave. Now, although this code works perfectly fine, uh, the limitation of this code is uh, if I want to run one the uh, or I want to generate only the sine wave, I don't have a choice to ignore the codes that are going to generate the square wave and then the triangular wave. So in this case, even though I want to generate only one code, my entire application is going to preload entire code. So as we can see, it works, but uh, for example, if you have the limitation for the size of the application, if your application is slow and everything, what you can do it is you can create uh, required code into the sub VI. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to save that VI as a sign.vi. Uh, so the, th the motivation here is we're going to save different VIs into the hard disk. And then when we actually need that particular code, we're going to dynamically call the VI and load it into the memory. That means uh, you can ignore the code that are not actually required when you want to run it. Uh, this reduces the size of your application as well as it is going to run much more faster and effectively. So in this case, I've created three sub VIs, sine, square, and triangle. So uh, one prerequisite of creating a code like this is uh, your all the sub VIs that need to be called dynamically should share the same connector vein. If you don't have a proper connector vein, you cannot actually use the dynamically call VIs. So to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to create a relative file path. So I'm going to use the application directory to get the file path. And then I'm going to use the build path. And then I'm going to build a uh, a string array which will hold all the file names. So I'll have the name as a sign.vi followed by the square.vi and then the triangle.vi. I just wanted to confirm whether the spelling is correct. So once I've done it, I can use the index array to select particular file path uh, using the enum. So I'm going to use the index array. And next thing what we're going to do is, is I'm going to go to the application palette and then get the call by reference. You can use either of that. So in this case, I'm going to use a call by reference. 
and then I'm going to get the open VR reference VI. So basically what it does is the first one is going to create the refnum and the second one is going to actually run the VR during the runtime. So I'll create a constant on the top. Uh, this will actually give you the connector pane that is required for the VI. So in this case, I'm going to drag one of the VI into that reference. As you can see, the connector pane has changed. So basically, as you can see, it is the prerequisite that the connector pane of the VI should match. Now, if I run the VI, I can load the different codes just by selecting the different file path. As you can see, there is no existing code in the beginning, but I can dynamically load the code from the VI. I hope you like this video. Please like, share, and comment in this video. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for future LabVIEW videos.